My parents had just celebrated a milestone wedding anniversary. Dad was only 17 when they married, hardly old enough to get into the hospital room where I was born. Forty years later, Mom and Dad still held hands. They laughed together and really liked each other. On December 29, 2008, really just hours after the holiday visits had ended, Mom was awakened in the night by a knock at the seldom used front door. Mrs. McIntyre, the young man said after identifying himself, there's been an accident. I'm sorry to tell you that Mark was killed. Mom immediately remembered what had been one of the most difficult tasks of Dad's 37 year mining career. And she replied, oh, Jason, I'm so sorry you had to come and tell me that. We need to go to the hospital, he said. She repeated, shaking her head. I'm just so sorry you had to come and tell me that. Then the meaning of Jason's words washed over her and she fell to the floor. Dad worked at a car wash and sold Kirby vacuum cleaners before he went underground at Valley Camp Coal in 1971. He was a mechanic, a welder, and a roof bolter, but he didn't do any of those jobs for very long. After distinguishing, distinguishing himself outside in the lab, he was asked to join management, as he put it, which meant he would have to leave the UMWA. Though I was only seven years old, I remember distinctly that that was a hard decision for Dad. But it turned out to be one he didn't regret. Dad's early mentors were good to him, as was the coal industry, giving him every chance to succeed. And succeed he did. He was a natural leader, smart, funny, caring, and focused on the miner as a human resource, as well as on production and the bottom line. Eventually, Dad became vice president and general manager of Quaker Coal Services Group, that phase of his career beginning with the startup of Harrison Mining Processing in Cadiz, Ohio, a non-union operation for which Dad interviewed and hand-selected every man on the job. Mom says Dad practically skipped work in those days. He loved the challenge and the responsibility of the job, and he loved the men who labored with him. He would talk to me and to anyone who would listen about production, and transportation, and sales, and everything that had to do with the success of the business. Dad also cared deeply about keeping the miners alive, healthy, and safe on the job, taking great pride in the two first place sentinels of safety award, Harrison uh, won for the underground coal group in 92 and 94. But as mom immediately recalled during the first moments of Jason's unimaginable visit, Dad had also faced significant employee injury and even death. <coughs> On a cold night at the river loadout, doing his job in a new and unfamiliar environment, my precious dad apparently fell from a coal barge while or after inspecting it for water and disappeared into an icy and swift moving Ohio River. He was found several hours later when his life-vested body surfaced from beneath a loaded barge, which was moved as the tugboats searched the river. Mark Douglas McIntyre, born in Martinsville, West Virginia, was 57. My family spent 2009 trying to catch our breath regain our footing and figure out how we were going to live without our father, husband, grandfather, brother, and son. You had have dad in law to most of those because dad was a rock at the center of two large and loving families, both his and my mother's. Each of us misses him terribly. The crazy thing about the way my dad left this world is that if dad was anything, he was careful. 
He was a precaution follower. Whether he was mining coal, hunting squirrels, or bear, or wild boar, whether reloading one of his dozens of guns, building a deck, putting a roof on a house, repairing machinery. There was a safe and a proper way to do everything. And he preached that way, and he followed it. While we may never know exactly how he died, I guarantee you that he appreciated how dangerous the job was. <clears throat> what this goes to show, men and women, is that even the safest among you cannot protect against every risk or eventuality. You are aware of certain dangers, you highlight the risk, and you work toward keeping yourself and your brothers and sisters informed, <coughs> alert, safe, and alive. I am here to remind you, to implore you, to do whatever you reasonably can <coughs> to keep another family, your family, from losing my own job. Give the rules your attention and stay alert. My father loved the coal industry and the people, managers, workers, and regulators who make it shine. He would wish the very best for you. In closing, on behalf of my family, I want to express our sincere appreciation to staff assistant Greg Fetty and others at MSHA District 3, to West Virginia Office of, Office of Miners Health Safety and Training Director Ron Wooten and his staff, to Chris Hamilton and other members of the Board of Coal Mine Health and Safety. These ladies and gentlemen have acknowledged our grief, considered our suggestions, and West Virginia has shepherded into the industry a rule designed to enhance the safety of rivermen operated, employed by coal operators. Dad would applaud that effort after scrutinizing it pretty carefully, but still leave you, as I do, with a personal admonition that you make safety a priority as you do this dangerous and important work.